Hello, everyone. My name is Fan Zhang. I'm currently a lecturer in Griffith University from、um, Australia. Today, I'm going to talk about a research project entitled "Undergraduate Architectural Students' Perceptions About Evidence-Based Design、uh, Philosophy." So, first, about、um, some background introduction.、Um, First, what are the values? Values refers to、um, the things that we care about,、um, the things that we think are important that matter to us.、Um, values also refer to the goals and ideals we aspire to and measure ourselves by. Interestingly, the values are seldom agreed upon universally. On the contrary, values are often only shared. By small groups of people, in the architectural context,、um, the design values refer to attitudes, beliefs, orientations, and ideologies of the architects regarding how the designs should be made.、Um, different design values are often in conflict with each other, so sometimes it requires the architects to make. Trade-offs between、um, different design values. In the architectural field, there is a general lack of factual base or empirical foundation. So, as a result, the design decision making is more dependent on architects' individual values and the value sets rather than a、um, empirical or factual base. The 20th century is mostly dominated by the modernist architecture and modernist design values. And one of the most important legacies of the modernist architecture is the lack of、um, consideration towards human needs and environmental impact. However, entering into the 25th、um, century. The social values, including architectural values, have now been shifted towards more human-centered and environment-conscious ideologies.、Um, the next issue is about creativity. So, in the past, creativity has been deemed as、um, a, a talent of of only a few people, like. Um, artists, musicians, and inventors. However, the concept of creativity has been broadening in recent decades. Now, it's been perceived as as something that can be learned. In terms of the、um, architectural context, of course, creativity、um, plays an essential role in doing architectural design. However, there is another. Um, equally important thing, which is、um, social responsibility, it plays an also a very important role in building up a meaningful built environment.、Um, design methodology refers to、um, the study of the principles, practices, and procedures of design. And in John Christopher's book. He sees design methodologies as a way to reconcile conflicts between art, which is known as an intuitive process, and science,、uh, which is a、uh, rational process. So,、um, any design、um, uh, methodology will fall somewhere between these two ends.、Um, the previous studies about the Uh, design architectural design education has revealed that there are three major shortcomings.、Um, the first one is the unresponsiveness to the changing needs of、um, social and architectural values, and the second one is the lack of design methodology, and the third one is the lack of consideration for building users in the design process. Um, the next issue is、um, evidence-based design, short for ABD. Evidence-based design is inherited from 
evidence-based medicine. And in the architectural context, it refers to a process for the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current best evidence from research and practice. Um, although EBD has gaining, um, has been gaining some momentum in the um, architectural design practice, um, EBD has really been taught as a holistic and systematic design philosophy that will guide the students to uh, come up with design solutions. So in this research project, um, I aim to incorporate the new and innovative EBD uh, design philosophy into undergraduate architectural students' um, design education, and also examining students' perceptions and attitudes towards EBD before and after um, the introduction of EBD. Um, the evidence-based design is embedded into an undergraduate um, um, course called Innovation in Design, which also aims to introduce um, various um, innovations in the broader building industry. So um, the teaching and learning activities of um, ABD uh, was only embedded in the contents um, from week one to week four. So week one is the introduction of the um, innovation in the architectural context. Week two discusses about the concepts of design values, design methodology, the changing concept of um, creativity, and also evidence-based design. And uh, week three will introduce the human-centered design, uh, including social design, biophilic design, and active design. And in the week three tutorials, students uh, are introduced to the um, scientific modes of inquiry for the human behavior studies, um, including questionnaire, um, interviews, um, naturalistic observations, and observing physical traces, et cetera. And a week four will introduce the environment conscious design, including green, sustainable, and zero energy building design methodologies. And also in the week four tutorial, students will be introduced to the um, um, scientific modes of inquiry for uh, investigating the um, environmental issues like uh, monitoring of the indoor environmental quality, uh, conducting energy audit um, in the buildings or um, conducting building performance simulations and so on. So, the um, research design in this project includes a um, pre-survey and a post-survey. The pre-survey is um, allocated in week one before the introduction of the EBD. And it contains 11 multiple choice questions and two open-ended questions, um, mainly asking about um, students' views of architecture and architectural design process, um, there are concepts of um, creativity, um, design values, and uh, what are the commonly used design methods and processes, and uh, whether they are satisfied with previous design studio courses, etc. And the post survey is allocated in week five, and it contains um, 12 multiple choice questions only, and um, on similar topics as in the pre-survey. So this research design entitles a uh, comparison between the results um, in pre-survey and post-survey so that uh, one can see the trend of change in students' perceptions and attitudes. Um, so altogether, there are 73 enrolled students in the course Innovation in Design and um, there are six engineering students, uh, 15 um, second year architecture students, 52 third year architecture students. And um, the surveys were only open to architecture students, not the engineering students. And in the pre-survey, 
Uh, there are altogether 52 responses collected, um, representing 78% of the response rate. Um, and in the post survey, there are um, 33 responses, which is about 48% um, of the response rate. And all the collected data were first um, tested for normality using the chaperone Wilk test. And uh, for the non-normally distributed data, they were analyzed by the independent samples man witness test. And all the statistical tests were um, carried out in SPSS. And um, the multiple choice questions were analyzed by the descriptive statistics. And um, all the open-ended questions were analyzed by the thematic analysis. So the results. Um, in both the pre and post survey, students were asked um, about their views of architecture. So they uh, were asked to select or locate um, the architecture between the art pole represented by one and the science pole represented by seven. So the mean score in the pre-survey was um, 3.8 and the mean score in the post survey was um, 4.1, um, indicating that um, the view of architecture was um, sl slightly closer to the science pool in the post surveys. However, this difference was not statistically significant. Um, in another similar question, students were asked um, how they see the architectural design process compared to creation of art represented by one and solving a science problem represented by seven. And the mean score in the pre-survey was um, 4.2 and the mean score in the post-survey was 4.4. Um, so meaning that um, students' perceptions of architectural design process were uh, or more um, uh, closer to solving a science problem in the um, post survey. Uh, however, this difference was not significant either. Um, in another question, students were asked whether they have developed or intend to develop clear design values in design projects. So one represents um, strongly disagree and seven uh, meaning that they strongly agree with the statement. And um, the mean score in the pre-survey was uh, 4.9 and mean score in post-survey was um, about six. And this difference was highly significant, meaning that um, students um, displayed a stronger tendency to develop clear design values in um, their future design projects in the um, post-survey. And in another question, students were asked whether they have considered or intend to consider building users' needs and preferences in their previous on and future design projects. And the results showed that um, the mean score in the post survey um, was significantly higher than the mean score in the pre-survey, indicating that um, students have developed um, a stronger tendency to consider building users' needs in their future design projects. Um, the post survey also asked students uh, whether they feel more confident in developing and implementing design values in their future design practices. And uh, the majority um, specifically, 81% of the respondents have voted five and higher, indicating a prevailing positive response. In a pre-survey, students were asked whether they feel there is a lack of design methodology in their previous um, design um, projects and design studios. And um, the results showed that there are a similar proportion of respondents who have given a negative answer, uh, a neutral answer, and a positive answer. 
So this um, kind of phenomena actually indicates that um, there is a confusion of students about the uh, concept of design methodology. So for students who have given a negative answer, um, they were further asked, uh, what are the reasons of their dissatisfaction of the um, design studios, previous design studios? And um, the three top reasons are, first, the lack of um, education and guidance, and second, um, subjective or biased or unclear marking standard. And the third, there is um, a room for the improvement of certain skills. And among these uh, three reasons, um, the subjective or biased or unclear marking standard is the top reason for the dissatisfaction of the uh, design studios. In the pre and post surveys, students were also to choose um, the common methods for them to develop design concepts. And um, in the pre-survey, the top selected method is finding inspiration from nature and arts, indicating an um, intuition-oriented um, design method. And in the post-survey, the top selected method is doodling, drawing, and modeling, uh, which is a representative um, uh, design by drawing method. Um, it is also worth mentioning that um, the reading research articles and RT, uh, scientific reports, which is a typical um, research-based design method, has seen a sig significant um, uptick in the post-survey. So from ranked the last in the pre-survey to uh, being ranked the third in the post-survey. Um, post and similarly, students were also asked to choose uh, what are the common uh, research activities in their design studios. So um, the numbers shown in bold denotes the uh, ranking of the methods, um, which have seen a significant um, increase in the um, post survey. So they are the typical um, scientific research activities like um, observing building users' behaviors, uh, reading research publications, and um, surveying building users. So it means that um, students um, tend to accept um, the use of um, res scientific research methods as a way to develop um, their design concepts. So in the post-survey, um, students were also asked whether the evidence-based design has helped them form a clearer design methodology. And um, the results showed that 88% uh, of the respondents had uh, voted five and higher, indicating a prevailing positive perceptions towards ABD. Um, so this study is not without limitations. Um, so basically the response rate um, in the post survey has dropped significantly. Um, as a consequence, the results might not represent the views and perceptions of the whole class. So final conclusions. Um, before the EPD was introduced, um, students commonly combined intuition um, design by drawing and some investigations and analysis in their design processes, but rarely utilized um, scientific modes of inquiry. And um, the research activities that they have commonly carried out in design studios, like reading uh, the architectural journals, um, did not really qualify for um, systematic research evaluation. And um, students are um, confused about um, design methodology. Um, after the EBD was introduced, students tend to develop clear design values and take building users' needs and preferences into consideration. And they have shown an appreciation of learning fact-based knowledge. Um, and there is an 
uptake of um, fact-based and research-based design methods and process um, in their um, post survey. And also uh, there is a dominant perception that EBD has helped them form a clearer design methodology. Okay, so this is about um, the research project. I welcome your um, questions um, and comments. Thank you.